Welcome to Bash tutorial number 7, Reading and Writing to Files. This is ideal to use with a customised script for reinstalling an operating system to make changes to some of the configuration files. So let's start with a variable of a file name, slash temp slash test.txt. And first off we're going to deal with a simple writing to the file. Echo and the line you want with the greater than sign as redirector to output to the file. I'm using the file in the variable form. Now one greater than sign clears the file, two appends the line to it. So let's see what happens. So the contents of the file is clear file append line. Those are the two lines I wrote to it. Now for an alternate method using t. You'll find t useful for editing config files in the slash etc folder when they're owned by the root user. But first off, here's how you can check a file exists and create it if necessary. So if single square bracket not dash e file or directory and the log file, then we'll just tell the user we're creating the file and just use the command touch. Here's how to use t. First you echo the line you want, then you follow up with another command using pipe, and that's t dash a append and then you've got a file name. Now if you're doing a file in the slash etc folder you would use sudo t. Okay so we're creating the file then we see the echo on the screen and then when we view the contents of the file that is what is in there what we've just echoed onto the screen. Brilliant. Right, let's move along to writing lots of lines to a file using an array. Because doing lots of echo lines isn't particularly efficient. And if, so we declare a numeric indexed array, just using declare dash a, lowercase a, with the array name temp write. Now following from the previous tutorial where I showed about how to use arrays, we're just going to add a line into it. I'm not going to worry about the index number. So all work and no play makes Jack dull boy. And because that line is there, we want to write it a few times, don't we? So now I want to write that array in its entirety to the file. Don't, but I don't want them to be all spaced out on a single line. I want them to be appearing new lines like that. So use the command printf percent s backslash n. Then space, in quotes, the name of the array, the at sign shows all items in the array, and then we redirect it to the file. So how does it look? Well, let's see. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, quite a few times over. Now I want to get rid of the contents of that file, but of course being bash, there's a few ways to do that. My preferred method, just cat dev null into the file, that'll zero it out. Here's two alternate methods. Now let's have a look at how to read a single value from the file. So we're going to declare a variable, var1, then I'm going to echo it into the file, as we've already seen, then I'm going to change the string to nothing, just to prove that it's working. So the easy way to read a single variable is using grep. So we grep for what we're after, var1 in this case, and then the file name. And we pipe that command through to cut, a function of cut is to separate a string into separate fields, so we're using the delimiter equals field2, that's field2, i field1, field2, then utilising x args to get rid of any spaces between the equals sign, so that'll be the space there. And there's the explanation of it. So let's see what it does. var1 equals hello world, and it's read that from the file. However, if you are using it as a variable, then you need to consider it can be extremely dangerous because you're trusting user input. Never trust user input. So many programmers make that mistake. I'll come on to a method of how to filter that in a moment. So firstly, let's look at reading all lines of a file. And this is almost a similar principle to what I'm using in my program NoTrack. I put in a few block list names, with the equals and I'm just scattered them out and put some comments in there. A basic method to read all the lines of the file is using while and read. So that's while read dash r then you specify the variable name 
I just call it line, then do. So echo out the line, then at the end you use done, and you're inputting, that is the less than sign, the file. Let me show you what happens. There you are, we have read each individual line at a time and echoed it onto the screen. But that's not good enough if you want to read the variable value off there. So here's where we look at using the internal field separator, known as IFS. So to utilize IFS, we insert it into the while statement. So while IFS equals single quote, a field separator of equals and space. Then we use read dash r. Now this time I've got two values on there. The internal field separator is going to read one side of the value at a time. I'm calling it key value. Same as before, we're just going to echo out the line just to show you what happens. And I'll leave the previous output on the screen here. So key block list no track value one. See, they're separated. So we're reading each side, so that is potentially useful to get a variable value from. So here's some other uses of IFS. So utilizing the dollar before it, like that, means it will read special characters in that string. But slash n, filtering a new line in Linux, data that may contain a comment. Now you note the underscore here is just getting rid of any other values. It's like Yes, read a variable from it, but I'm not interested in what, what it actually is. And then the last one there, slash R, is Windows Carriage Return. Depending on the data you're handling, you may need to use the slash N or slash R. Now we're going to increase the complexity and filter the user input. If you're just doing a script purely for your own use, then this is completely overkill. But if you're using it in a program you're going to distribute to others, then it might be something you want to utilize. So I've created a function called filter int, filter integer, and we're going to pass a few different values to it. So the value I want to check, the minimum permitted, maximum permitted, and the default. So this first line is a pattern match. So that basically pattern matches an integer, positive or negative. Then if that's successful, we're going to compare the number is it greater than or equal the minimum permitted value? And is it less than or equal to the maximum permitted value? And upon success, we return the value given to the function, value to check. And upon failure, we return the default value. We'll set some default values for the variables in case any are missing from the configuration file. So as before, I want to utilize IFS with the read, key, and value. But now I want to trim any comments that are in the string, any trailing spaces, and any opening or closing quotes. So because I need to evaluate each line at a time in order to set the variable, one of the easiest ways to do that is with the case statement. So we do case key in, and I give it the variable name, block list no track. So I'm going to utilize the filter int function. We'll pass the value to it, and I give it a minimum value of zero, maximum of one, default value of one, so true or false. And then I set the value of the variable as the function exit code. And because of the weird way you have to handle exit codes in bash, you can't just do this. It doesn't work. Now I know most programming languages would let you do that, not in bash. So just to be a bit different, for the value of adblock manager, I'm going to set a maximum of four and a minimum of zero. And for easy list, minimum of zero, maximum of two. Why not? Make it a little bit different. So let's see what we get. And there we go. Adblock manager had zero, literally the word zero. So instead that was incorrect, not an integer. So we had default value there. And for easy list, value was three, I initially gave it in the file, out of range, so that falls back to the default. Only the first two were correct. And the final part of the tutorial, changing a value in a file. So using the same file as earlier, I'm just going to look for block list no track inside the file. And if it equals nothing, means the line isn't there. 
I'll set the value. So just echo and then use sudo t, although in this case sudo is excessive, just t because the file is in the temp folder. But if it does exist, out then, what I'm going to use is the command sed. sed i s forward slash. This is like the equivalent of regex. I'm looking for this part of the string at the beginning. So block list, no track. And it equals with an unknown amount of spaces around it. And that's it. Now at this point in the sed line, we're looking at what we're going to replace the value with. It'll find the line block list no track and it's currently equal to 1. So I'm going to repeat the line 1 because otherwise said would replace the whole line. And I'm just going to change the value of it to 0. Again that probably sounds very complicated. So let's see if the value has changed to 0 and then I'll cat the whole file out onto the screen. As you can see there, the value has now changed because earlier it was 1, now it is 0. So that was a look at reading and writing to files in Bash. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later. Bye.